first, a serious programme. We've got two guests with us today who've made their mark in different ways on stage and television. They're both in their 20s, damn them, and while <laughs> song and dance star Bonnie Langford has been treading the board since childhood, newcomer Steve Coogan was unknown till 18 months ago when the talent to impress started his move to stage mm. centre. So who are you today then, Steve? Well, I thought it was quite obvious I'm... 007 reporting for duty at <laughs> Pebble Mill. <laughs> <laughs> A change of tack now, pardon the pun. If I mention impressionists, you'll probably think of Mike Yarwood, Rory Bremner, Phil Cool. But our next guest, though not yet a household name, has been described by one television critic as the brightest and most gifted impressionist he's ever seen. Praise indeed. He's with us now, along with Prince Charles, Neil Kinnock, Donald Sindon, Sean Connery, to name but a few. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Coogan. To, to you, you're a bare 18 months out of uh, theatre school. It seems a very dramatic way to suddenly burn all your, your boats, if mm. you like, and say, I'm going to be an impressionist. Um, well, <coughs> it, fate did it for me, really. You know, it I mean, chose you <laughs> rather than you chose it. <laughs> no one had employed me as an actor, that's what I mean. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, no, I just I set out to uh, be an actor after drama school. Um, but but uh, to get my equity card, as all actors have to, I, I uh, went round a sort of limited cabaret circuit in Manchester where I trained, uh, doing impressions, because that was the way to get my ticket. And I thought, once I get my ticket, I'll give it up and I'll go into acting. But people started giving me work and I had a few breaks on te television, the odd sort of thing, and uh, I realised, you know, I might, I might as well do what I'm best at, you know. So you pursued it. Had you always done it then? I mean, were you were doing it as a schoolboy? Yeah, I used, to, I used to do it at school. I used to do... Um, House masters and teachers. It was a, it was a good way of. Um, we had a French master who would uh, he'd come in and uh, he'd give the pupils an option. He'd say either we can do you can do French, you know, conjugating verbs or whatever, or you can or we'll have Steve Coogan at the front doing impressions. Um, and I I didn't <laughs> want to, you know, but then he'd, he'd, he'd the, then he'd say I'd say I don't really want to, and he'd say okay everyone open your books we're going to do some work, and then everyone else would say get to the front and do some impressions. So you're a popular say. lad at school, obviously. Uh, for that reason <laughs> only. <laughs> Now, are you popular with the people you impress? I mean, I gather you've done Sean Connery in, in, in front of Sean Connery or in a room where he's been... <laughs> in a room where he's been... I, I, yeah, I did, I did a, a Prince's Trust thing where uh, he was comparing and they had to ask his permission and he, he saw me do him, and, uh, but I didn't hang around to see what, what he thought well, of it. You know. I may have, you see, may have you, used his licence to kill on me. You, you see, know. you know that when you interview impressionists like this, that the audience also says, oh, go on, do, do your Sean Connery, so let's... Well, uh, Sean Connery, you have, to, uh, you have to move your mouth to one side of your face <laughs> and uh, lick your lips and uh, do things with your eyebrows, you know. No matter how hard he tries, he still can't get rid of the Edinburgh brogue, you know. It's, uh, it's a problem. <laughs> you thought for going for Bond next time, you might be in with a chat. Yeah. You, you're quite yeah. a few of the voices on Spitting Image now. Mm. Yeah. But, I mean, politicians today strike me as being so much more colourless than they were sort of five, even ten years ago. Yeah, that, that's, is, that, is that a problem? That, it, it is a problem. Um, <clears throat> People are more bland these days. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the pop stars like Jason uh, Donovan and things, they're not as sort of colourful as, as they were a few years ago. And a lot of the, the, a lot of the colourful members of the cabinet, like uh, Nigel Lawson, uh, Leon Britton, Hesseltine, uh, they, they've gone or, or were kicked out, you know. But they've, but, and, and, and the thing is now, you've got a lot of grey men, who, a lot of young sort of up-and-coming toys, and they're sort of, sort of characterless well, in a way. John is Major, why, you know, is, is, is this why on Spitting Image a lot more theatrical people have been brought in now? Just to give the, the voice artist something to do, mm. isn't it? Yeah, it's, well, half the problem, half your problem solved on Spitting Image because you've got a, a puppet doing it for you. Yeah. But, uh, you, and, and all, it's not always the case that you've got to do an accurate impression. You have to uh, embellish it or do something that suits the puppet. For example, um, Kenneth Clark is, uh, he sort of speaks like this. He's quite sort of emphatic about things. During the ambulance dispute, he was very <laughs> emphatic about things. But it, it wasn't, there's not really a lot there to go on. So what we did was, we sort of made him a bit of a beer-swilling, cigar-smoking <laughs> loud, you know. To give him a bit more colour. You're Donald Sindon on that, aren't you, as well? Aren't you Sindon? Uh, I have been Sindon on the show, yes. I, I, yes, yes, marvellous. Oh, English churches, yes, marvellous, yes. <laughs> about the knighthood. <laughs> <laughs> You've done him out of it now, I think. Do you... Do you 
inflict this on your on, on your family and friends? Do they have to tell you whether it's worth putting in front of the public or not? You know, well, when you're practicing. Them? I, d- I, d- I don't. I'm, I'm not someone who's sort of at parties. You know, sort of does a few impressions. People think he's really good, and after five minutes, they go, "I wish he'd shut up." Yeah. You know? But no, I, I, I um, I do it in front of a, a few close friends if I want to check something out. If I want to try a new one. Is anybody you can't do? R- Richard you? Burton. Really? Richard Burton. Mm. Because. Uh, <laughs> Because yeah. no, I was, I was going to be very sick then. No, but I can't. Do, I can't. <laughs> no, it's his lunchtime. We've got cooking coming up in a minute. No, I can't. But he's he had such a constitution, you know, that I I, I couldn't get the sort of the the, the I breadth. I think I understand what you're saying. Yes, he well, could, look, he could take a, a lot more than I can. I've got a little list here of some of the people you can do. So I want to see how many we can okay, cram in right, a minute. Okay, so are you feeling up to yep, right? Yeah, um, Roger Moore. Well, I think I did him at the beginning, so let's not hear too much from Roger. Up. <laughs> David Bowie. David Bowie speaks like this, and of course, years ago he used to sing with a Cockney accent, and now he sings like this again. <laughs> Prince Charles. Yes, well, Prince Charles is always filling his ring, always got this marvellous, sort of splendid, splendid, marvellous use of the word splendid. Ronnie, Ronnie Corbett. Well, right. Ro- Ro- Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> <laughs> good heavens, good heavens. Anyway, good evening. You know, I received a letter the other day from a man and he said, either you're the funniest man in the world or I'm a Dutchman. And it was signed Sven van Allenson of Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Caine. Well, Michael Caine speaks like that very quietly and when he gets angry, he gets bloody loud for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> What about Edward Fox? Edward Fox always speaks like he's got something stuck in his mouth. You know? <laughs> got something stuck in his teeth. Ben Elton? Yeah, well, Ben Elton, the man from Arnie. Yes, indeed. Well, Ben's got a lot of... Oh, speaks really fast. It's really frustrating. I don't know what he's talking about or what he's trying to say. And then he goes right down there. Yes, indeed. That's a little bit of a dig at the My name's Ben Elton. Good night. Shall we just... <laughs> he's on canny, is it? Shall we just finish off with a little Sylvester Stallone, can you? Yeah, well, you know something? I think, like, Purple Mill is pretty good. You know, like, people on there, they're all right. And the sound and stuff. And, uh, you know, something going to blow you away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've got a TV show glimmering in the future for Saturday nights. Yeah, it's, um, there's, a, there's a show starting called Live from Paramount City um, on the BBC um, every Saturday night, and I'll be popping up now and then on that. We and, hope you will. Uh, lots nice, of comics nice, on it. You know, nice to have seen you at the top of your career, as it were, on daytime live. Yeah, Thanks well, I'm going to go down the hill now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Coogan. Well done.